So in the last video, we talked a little bit about the enthalpy of reaction, or the heat of reaction. We said that when we measure something in joules or calories, we call it Q, or heat, but that when we change it to uh, kilojoules per mole of some substance, or kilocalories per mole of a substance, now we're going to call it delta H. Okay, So it's the amount of heat absorbed or released when one mole of a reactant reacts. Okay, So you can call it heat of reaction. Um, and sometimes it's giving more specific names. For instance, if you were burning something, you might call it a heat of combustion. It's just, again, the amount of heat released when you burn one mole of some substance. Um, you might call it a heat of decomposition. Okay? The amount of heat used when you decompose one mole of a substance. The heat of combustions are usually negative. Heats of decomposition are usually positive. Right? When you burn stuff, you tend to give off heat. When you would want to break something down, you need, usually need to put in heat. Um, we'll see later something called heat of fusion. Okay, that's going to be the amount of energy it takes to melt one mole of something. Okay, or heat of vaporization. That's going to be the heat it takes to vaporize or evaporate one mole of something. Okay, um, and later we'll also see something called heat of formation. And I'll define that for you later. But it's basically when you form something from its elements. So these are all heats of reactions. And we're going to find that we can, we can determine the heat of reaction in three different ways in this chapter. We've already learned one of them. One of them is from calorimetry. We can figure out what delta H is. Um, I think in the next video we're going to do the next one, which is from Hess's Law, which I think you learned last year. Um, and we're also going to learn how to use heats of formation to find the heat of reaction. And actually there's a fourth one. We're going to learn use something called bond energies, um, although they really just give us an estimate of the heat of reaction. Um, so you've seen these energy diagrams before. Okay, on the y-axis we put energy, and then the x-axis, that's our reaction coordinate or reaction pathway. This first one is endothermic because the reactants are lower. We have to add energy to get to the products. And here's where our delta H is. Okay, and Remember, this is where your activation energy, this is your activated complex. So this should all be something we've seen a few times this year. When it's exothermic, of course, the reactants are higher, and we release energy. So this one, delta H would be positive, and this bottom one, delta H, would be negative. Okay? Again, I think we've seen these before. So a kind of problem that we might see, let's say hydrogen reacts with oxygen to make water. So H2 plus O2 gives you water. Um, and the, here's our heat of reaction. When it has a negative sign, that means it's exothermic. Okay, And you can also just write it on the right side of the equation if you want to. If it had been positive, you could have, been, you could have just written it on the left side of the equation if you wanted to. So if we wanted to draw an energy diagram for this, We've got energy here and our reaction pathway here. Okay, since this one is exothermic, okay, we're going to start high. There's our activation energy, and we're going to end low. And on this, we're going to go ahead and show that this would be where the delta H is. Okay, and these are our reactants, and these are our products. So if two grams of oxygen reacts with an excess of hydrogen, how much heat is released? Well, it's just stoichiometry. So I'm going to start with two grams of oxygen. Okay, and I'm going to change grams to moles of oxygen. And then I'm going to change moles of oxygen to kilojoules. Okay, and I know one mole of oxygen is 32 grams. And I know that from my equation, one mole of oxygen releases 571.6. And I will let you figure out what that equals, because I didn't do it ahead of time. And I think you can do the math. And that's really all there is to thermochemical equations.